Welcome to Tom Teaches YouTube. I'm Tom and I'm here to teach you how to create and grow on YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to walk through the basics of Premiere Pro and get you started editing and exporting your very first video. So the first thing you wanna do when you're starting a project is to start out organized. And so we're gonna do a Hawaii vlog. I've created a new folder. I've got all of my video clips in there. I've got a photo that I think I might wanna use. Anything that you plan on doing with this project should go in this folder. And so that way it stays organized, you know where everything is. And so when you open up Premiere Pro, you should get something that looks a little bit like this. If the screen doesn't come up, you can go to File, New, and then just do New Project. Otherwise, you can click on New Project right here. I'm gonna call this project the Hawaii Vlog. And then for location, I also wanna put this in that same folder. So on the desktop, Hawaii Vlog, there's no other projects in there, and so I'm gonna click Select Folder. These settings should be okay to go with as is. Click OK. And now if you look, you've got all these different panels, uh, different things, different purposes for each one, and along the top, if you click on one of these, depending on what you're doing, like if you wanna adjust the color of your video, it's gonna optimize for that. If you wanna add effects, it's gonna change these panels up to optimize for that. If you want to mess with the audio, it's gonna switch things around for that. I like to stay in the editing for the most part. And the first place you wanna look down here is where your project files are going to be. Uh, it says import media to start. So I'm going to right click and say import. And I am going to go to my desktop and I'm going to double click on Hawaii vlog and I'm going to click on the first file. I'm gonna hold shift, click on the last file and it's gonna highlight everything in between. And then I'm gonna click on open. And so now I have all of these files in here. You can actually switch between list view and icon view with these buttons, which is super helpful if you kind of want to see what that video clip is. If you hold your mouse along it, you can kind of scrub through uh, and see what these clips are. I'm going to put it in list view for now because I'm going to be creating a timeline. It's called a sequence in Premiere Pro, but over in this area is where I'm going to be dropping my video clips and deciding which part of the clip I want to keep. And so what you can do is you can take one of your clips and then just drag it over here and it creates your timeline. Now, if you're like, which clip do I drop? Well, the main thing you want to look at is frame rate. That's why I kept it in list view. All of these video clips I took on the same day with the same camera with the same setting. So the frame rate was this 23.976 frames per second for, for all of my clips. Um, but sometimes if you use your phone to take some videos and you use a different camera to take other videos, these numbers might be different. Go with the frame rate that you have most of your clips in. So since all of mine were 23.976, I just grabbed a clip that had 23.976 and dragged it out here. And so you can see that it created this little this little sequence, this little timeline. It's a different icon than my videos. Um, I'm gonna change it, I don't wanna call it MVI, I'm just gonna call this Hawaii Vlog. And you can see it changes it up here too. And so one of my first things that I do when I have a timeline is I like to use the audio track to help me know when I'm talking in that section. So let's expand this audio one track by pulling it down a little bit. And if you click play, it'll start playing the clip or you can hit space bar. Where are we going today, Sarah? We're going on a helicopter tour. We're going on a what? Helicopter tour. Whoa. Okay, so I don't want all of that space in the beginning before I say where are we going today, Sarah. And so I'm going to cut out this section. There's a few things I can do. I'll show you a few ways. Uh, you can change to the razor tool or just hit C and it will turn into something where you can actually cut. So let's cut right here. And now let's change back to the selection tool or hit V. And then you'll notice I can actually move this around. Maybe if I wanted this at the end, I can do that. I can, I can slide this around, control Z, control Z. I'm going to delete this first part because I don't want it. And now I've got this empty space. I can either click and drag this back or Sometimes it's easier just to click on this empty space and hit backspace or delete. And so now, um, if I want to move my little play thing back to the beginning or to, to a certain section, I can just click anywhere on this little timeline. Um, I'm going to go back to the beginning and hit spacebar. Where are we going today, Sarah? We're going on a helicopter tour. You're going on a what? Helicopter tour. Whoa. 
And so I want to kind of stop what? right in the middle of the whoa part because I think that'll be a little bit funnier. Um, so I can also, oh, I can cut and go back to the razor tool with C and cut and then back to the selection tool and delete if I want to do that. Or I can just stay on the selection tool and then if I'm going to the end of the clip, uh, I can just pull this clip back like that. And I cut it off right in the middle of the whoa. You can actually see the little audio waveform whoa. And so I'm gonna go back to the middle. And so let me go back on my timeline, hit spacebar to play. Helicopter. Whoa. Where are we? Okay. And so I'm gonna click on my icon view now so I can see which clips are what. And I want the next one to kind of tell the story of the helicopter of us getting on the helicopter. So I don't wanna use this whole clip. Uh, one of the things I can do if I don't want to just drag this whole clip out here and mess with it out on the timeline, control Z, is if you are in the editing uh, section, workflow, double click on it, and you can actually see the whole video up here. This is not in my timeline yet. This is just showing me what is in the video. You can see I can, I can drag this, this little thing so I can see what's in the video. I want to get the section of us walking up to it like that. So let's start right here. I'm going to create uh, a little section that says this is where I want the beginning of my clip to be and this is where I want the end of the clip to be and that's called my in and my out point. So let's say I want the beginning of the clip to be right here. I'm going to say I and you can kind of see okay here's my it's, it's taking everything from here on to the end. Uh, let's click play. Okay, and that's where I want it to stop, so I'm gonna hit my out point with O. So now it's just taking this little section of the video. Um, if I click on this video and drag it now down to the timeline, it is only that section that I wanted. So let's click up right before the transition here and hit spacebar. And so right now, I kind of want to take out a little bit of this middle part because I feel the clip is a bit long, but I do want to show us getting onto the, the helicopter. So I'm going to go back to my razor tool, cut with a C, and let's say I want to cut here and to here. Go back to my selection tool. I've made two cuts in the beginning and the end of what I wanted to take out in the middle, and then I can click on that, hit delete, click on that space bar, hit delete, and now, The pacing's a little bit better. And so now I've got a few clips in there and I want to pull in a picture. So this is going to be a picture right here. There's no, I mean, I could do an in and out point, but there's no, there's no video. So I can just kind of actually just drag this out. Uh, since it's a picture, it doesn't have any audio track with it. You'll notice that this picture is a lot more zoomed in than what it actually looks like. And the reason for that is because it's a much higher resolution than the video that I took. And so to fix that, to kind of scale it back a little bit so we can see the full picture, uh, you can right click on the picture and then say set to frame size. Basically set it to the size that I have already in this timeline and then it'll zoom out. Sometimes if the picture's a little bit more square, you'll notice that there's gonna be some black bars on the left or the right, or maybe on the top or the bottom. You can get rid of those by just zooming in some more. To zoom in some more or to zoom out a little bit, click on the picture and then click on effects up here, effect controls. And here you'll see scale. Right now it's at 32%. Uh, when I first brought it in, it was at 100%. That's why it was so zoomed in. If I click and drag this number to the left and the right, I can, I can basically zoom in and zoom out as much as I want. Uh, and then if I wanna actually move it, maybe I wanna zoom in, but move it a little bit to the left, I can just double click on the picture and then just slide it over like this. So I like it right there. Let's go back a little bit and see what the transition looks like. And so now let's say I wanna add a little bit of music to my project to make it a little bit more fun. You can get free music at youtube.com slash audio library slash music. You can sort it by the mood, you can sort it by the instrument, genre, and everything like that, and then just download it by clicking on download. You can listen to it by clicking this play button. I found a song that I already liked a little bit earlier called Sour Apples, and I, I put it in my folder with all of my other assets. And so to actually bring it into your project, you just drag it down into one of the audio tracks. I 
I want the music to kind of start generally after my I'm done talking. I'm gonna expand this audio track a little bit as well. Let's see what it sounds like if it starts right here. Tour. Going on a what? Helicopter. What? Okay, so right off the bat, I realize I don't want any of these helicopter sounds in the background. I just want the music. So if I click on it though, it, I don't want to hit delete on the audio because it's also, it's linked to the video. And if I hit delete, it's going to delete both of them. So if you only want to delete the audio, if you hold alt, on a PC and option on a Mac and then click on the audio, you'll notice it only selects the audio and then you can hit delete. Also, if you don't want to delete it because maybe you want to you want to keep it just in case you want to use it later, if you hold your mouse in the middle of the audio file, which is a lot easier if you make it bigger, if it's, if it's super skinny, it's hard to do that, you'll see that this line right here is, this white line is the volume and you can see this little icon that shows up next to the mouse. I can pull this down if I just want to lower the volume or if I want to bring it all the way down. So alter option to delete it um, when you click on it or just bring the volume down. I'm going to just delete these, delete that, delete that. And let's say I want it to end at the end of this picture. How long do I want this picture? All right, so the picture's up for a long time. And then this is generally where I want it to end. I'm going to zoom in with my plus plus. Uh, and I like to end kind of as the waveform goes down. So I'm going to change to my razor tool. See, cut right there, change back to my selection tool and then delete the rest of that. Last couple of things. I want to put some text at the beginning that says helicopters in Hawaii. And so I want the text to show up. I'm going to move my, my playhead to the spot that I want it to show up on. I wanted to show up right here after I said, what are we doing today? For this, let's move to the graphics editor. So click on graphics and to start writing text, you can click on the, t the type tool or just hit T and then click generally where you want the text to be. You can move it later if you want. Let's call this helicop helicopters in Hawaii. Now let's go over here and we can actually start editing this text the way we want. If you don't see these options, it may still be under browse. Uh, but then if you click on edit, as long as you're, you'll notice it just created this, this graphic text box down here on the next layer, you'll be able to edit it. Two of my favorite tools are the horizontal center and the horizontal vertical that just centers it in the middle of the screen. And if I want to change the font, let me just, triple click on there so to highlight all of it. I can find a font that I like. Let's go with Gothic Ultra. Now notice it the font made it a little bit wider and so I may have to recenter if that happens. And then again, if you make it larger or smaller using this little tool right here, you may have to recenter again. So sometimes I don't center till the end of it. A common thing that people will do is if they want to click outside of this, it's still in the text tool. So if you click outside, it's going to create another text box and then another one. And so change it to the selection tool. So that way you don't have an, this, this, this empty text box that you accidentally created by having the text tool still selected. Let me click delete there. I like to add a shadow. And so it, you'll see the appearance here down here. If I click on this little check box, it creates a shadow. You can play with some of the settings here, uh, how you want it to look. You can change the color of the shadow by clicking here. I like a black shadow. So I like how that looks. And let me zoom in real quick plus, plus, plus. I like my text to end at the same point that a clip ends. So I don't want it out a little bit further that way or a little bit that way. Um, it looks better if they just end at the same time. So let's see how that looks. Click right beforehand and click play. We're going on a helicopter tour. You're going on a what? Helicopter. What? So I like how that looks. Now the final thing that I'm gonna do, this is looking pretty good for a little vlog, is I'm gonna create some transitions here at the end. So I want this to fade into the picture. Cause that going right into it's pretty jarring. So to do that, I am going to go to effects. And I'm just going to search for the effect instead of trying to click and find and all that stuff. I'm going to search for the dissolve effect. And so you'll see we've got cross dissolve, additive dissolve. I use the cross dissolve. Now, if you click this effect and drag it in between the two clips, make sure it's in between the two and not on the first one or just not on the second one, but in between, 
Okay, so that's much better. And you can do the same thing with audio, except it's not called a dissolve, it's called a crossfade. And so I usually just use the constant power. You can click and drag this effect to the end of your music. And so let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, so that's kind of a quick fade out. And so you can extend this out the same way you extended the cross dissolve, maybe start fading it out at the beginning of this cross dissolve and see how that sounds. There we go. And I've got my Hawaii vlog. Zoom out, zoom out. You can kind of see all the layers in the timeline. If I want to make this a video file that I can share elsewhere, you want to click on your timeline anywhere. Go to File, go to Export Media or Control M. If you're ever putting anything on the internet, you want the format to be H.264. And with the preset, since I put most of my stuff on YouTube, I go down to one of the YouTube settings and I usually pick 1080p. The reason I pick 1080p is because you can actually see down here where it says what your source sequence is. My resolution is 1920 pixels long and 1080 pixels high. And so that's where that 1080 comes from. You want this number to match that number. If you're using an older camera, it might say like, 1280 by 720 and in that case you would do YouTube 720 and so as long as this resolution matches the output resolution and this frame rate 23.976 matches that frame rate they'll usually automatically match those together then your video should look just the way it looked when it was in this timeline output name let's click on this I want to put this in the same folder as my Hawaii vlogs and then just keep this as Hawaii vlog mp4 click save and then click export and now when I go to my Hawaii vlog folder there's a Hawaii vlog mp4 where are we going today Sarah we're going on a helicopter tour we're going on a what helicopter Whoa. And there is my video. And those are the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro. What questions do you have? What tutorials do you want to see? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you'd like to stay in the loop with videos on how to create and grow on YouTube, including tutorials on Premiere Pro, as well as YouTuber assignments. These are assignments that I actually give my students in my YouTube video production class that you can do to level up your YouTube game. Then go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications to find out when new videos are released. My name is Tom. This is Tom Teaches YouTube. I hope you learned something today and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.